Hey, welcome back to another episode of Big John's Cooking. Today, we're doing some uh, some cabbage rolls. Stick with me. All right, I got me a pot of water going. I'm going to add some salt to that, and I'm going to use the cabbage there. Uh, I'm gonna drop, drop the whole head in there. Peel the leaves back as they start to wilt, so they, they're more pliable. Uh, I'm going to use ground pork and ground veal. We're going to toss some parsley inside there along with salt, pepper, and uh, some garlic as a, a feeler for that. Maybe toss in a couple other seasonings depending on how I'm feeling about the mixture. Uh, I may add maybe a half a pound of ground beef to this depending on how many uh, how many balls I think I'm going to get out of this. Not making a whole lot, but you know, also want to have, you know, eat enough, you know. So my sauce is going to be tomato paste and uh, the tomato sauce. I'm going to probably put these tomatoes on the inside of the meat. Just some extras there. Maybe toss in a little V8 juice to um, for my sauce. Some, uh, some thyme, some basil. Uh, I think that'll be about it. Maybe add some parsley into the into my sauce as well. So, with that said, let me get this started, and I'll bring you right back. I'm just gonna put about a half a cup of salt in this. I'm using pink salt, just because no particular reason. So, I'm gonna pour this this out make it a little easier might want to find you a good bone and knife to do this with try not to cut yourself when you're doing it hopefully I don't cut myself just pop that bad boy out like that Drop them in the pot and let them go. This may take a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna let that boil. The water's hot, but it's, it's not boiling just yet. But you're not looking to really cook it, so we're just trying to make the uh, leaves a little pliable. They're gonna cook some more in the oven. Plop a lid on this. Hold that steam in. See if we can make this job a little quicker. All right, this is going to be hot, so be careful. Don't burn yourself. And I'm just going to peel the leaves off of it till I get the desired amount that I need. I got on some cotton gloves up under these. Take my hands a bit. I'm still starting to feel the heat of this a little bit. So I'm gonna pull this up out of here so I ain't gotta constantly reach into that hot water. And adjust this camera like magic. We're in there. And just peel these off. And I've let this go for about 20 minutes. All they do is just peel right on off perfectly. All right, I think that should be enough for me. I'll uh, set the rest of this aside and uh, we'll find another application for that. So, with that said. Move on to the next step. All right, we're going to start this off. I'm adding seasoning blend to this. Uh, it's uh, onions, bell peppers, uh, celery, and uh, red peppers as well, and a little bit of parsley. Uh, we're going to add a little oil to a pan. Toss this in. 
about that much, about half a bag or so. And we're going to let this saute down a little bit. Sorry about that noise. I might have had that bag a little close to the mic. Uh, but we're going to let this go and uh, saute this down. And we're going to combine our meat together. Matter of fact, if I can slide that over a little bit, grab my bowl. Just head over here next to it. Bring the camera over a little bit. So it's in our veal. Keep the paper out of that. We don't want that. Toss in our pork. Hopefully we ain't hearing too much background noise. And I'm going to use, I said salt and pepper, but I'm going to use some It's Incredible in there from uh, Heaven Made Products. Toss that in, good amount. And of course, you know, we come in with the accent. I don't put that in there. Well, I must be out. And I try not ever, ever to be out. You know, so and we'll grab some of our herbs here. Got a little bit of time that we're gonna toss in there just a little bit. I believe I got some some dry basil here that we're going to toss in there as well. Just a little bit. Not much. And I believe I got some oregano that I'm going to toss in as well. Not much. Just a little bit. And just a little bit of these diced tomatoes, not much. A couple of tablespoons, I guess. You don't want a whole lot in there. Add the rest of that to our sauce. And then we're just gonna let these veggies saute, just thaw them out really. Add a little salt to it, help it along. They're also going to cook inside this, so I'm going to let this cool down a little bit before I add it to this. But I want to saute them a little bit, take some of the chill off of them, toss them around a little bit, mix this up a tad, and we're going to let this set up and let all the flavors marry. And this looks like a good amount, so I'm not going to worry about adding any ground beef. Mainly because the veal and the ground beef is pretty much the same. Uh, veal is just a six month old cow. And I hope I didn't ruin that for anybody that likes veal. But if you've done any research on it, that's what I found. If I'm wrong, uh, Somebody on the internet lied to me, so don't just blame me uh, and leave me nothing messed up in the in the comment section. Uh, I don't mind the comments, but let's be nice about it. If I'm wrong, you don't need being mean. So with that said, I'm gonna let this set aside. Let this finish up a little bit here. Feels good. I'm gonna let it. Cool off, shut that down, let that cool off, and I'll bring you back.
that was about two tablespoons of that sofrito. Or I'm not butchering that up too bad. It's a soup base. It uh, it adds great flavor. So we're gonna toss that around a little bit, get everything mixed in, get this onions and celery and stuff. It's done cooled down, so we're gonna add that. This is over here. Get all that mixed in. Cabbage leaves should be cool. So with that said, I got this mixed up pretty good. And it's smelling awesome. So it's coming together very well. So change my gloves out. So working on our leaves. I almost forgot my fresh herbs. Gotta have that parsley in there. And although the It's Incredible has a little garlic in it, we're gonna add a little bit more. You can't go wrong with garlic. So with that said, you know, got to have it. Get that mix, and we'll bring you right back. Now I'm gonna tell you, it was already smelling fantastic. Now it looks good. That parsley in there, smelling awesome. Between the parsley and the garlic, yeah, this is this is on point. Let's put this together. All right, got my pan over here. Set that to the side. We're going to get about that much. Not a whole lot. You can make these as big as you want to. And we're just going to roll it up like that. And set them seam down. Now this is a big daddy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break this one up a little bit. Have to break out a knife here. That way. And if you want to, you can cut the ribs out of your cabbage. Save it for another application or just toss it away, however you feel like you want to do it. But once again, just fold it over. Put your seam side down. That way they hold their, their uh, shape and whatnot. And I'm going to toss mine in the trash. Uh-oh. We're causing some problems here. Hold tight. My island is trying to move on me. Drawer didn't want to shit. Alright. Guess that'll be a blooper. Put it in there. Fold it over. Tuck in the ends. Best you can. Tuck it in the pan. Guess I should have cut all these and ahead of time. But it ain't nothing to cut them. Just slicing it down the side of the rib. Alright, beautiful. Lovely. Some of these smaller ones you can just go ahead and fix them up as you want to. Now this will cook for about 45 minutes just to make sure your, your meat is 
cook well. And I believe I'm gonna get about 12 in this pan. And that'll be enough for the night. Any leftover meat I got, I'll freeze it. Save it for another occasion. Or do something else with it. But as you see, all I'm doing is cutting down the side of that rib there whenever I'm getting rid of it. And you only really need to cut that thick piece to get rid of that. That way you can fold it over with no problem and seal her up. But you can leave it on. It don't really matter. And you can stuff these in there nice and tight. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. They like the company. Just like me and you. Alright. I think y'all done seen me roll enough of these. You probably done got bored. If you ain't changed the channel already and found something else that's more entertaining. I have been told that. But just like that. And with that said, let me finish this up. I only got a few more to do. I'll bring you back. All right. I got this in the pan. I was getting ready to, you know, put that other little bit in the freezer. And I said, you know what? That's going to go totally to waste if you do that. So I went ahead and stuffed this pan. So there you have it. All right. For my sauce, we got the rest of those diced tomatoes and a small can of tomato sauce. And we're going to add in the rest of the juice off of those diced tomatoes that we had. And I said I was going to use tomato paste, uh, but I changed my mind. I'm going to go with the rest of this sofrito just because I know it's going to liven up the flavor compared to just using, you know, clean tomato base and I needed to use up the rest of that jar keep from having that sitting in the refrigerator and add, I add a little water to that chicken stock would probably go well to help thin out your sauce here but I'm just going to use the water and I add a little bit of more thyme to this And I'm going to use dry uh, parsley in my sauce and a little bit of oregano. And a little bit of granulated garlic. Although the sofrito, sofrito, it, uh, it has all this in there. I'm just adding a little bit more. Get this good mix. All right. Got all that mixed up. And just simply pour this over the top. this aside spread that about now your cabbage is going to produce a lot of liquid because I know you're thinking to yourself man that's not a lot of sauce it's going to be a plenty because once the meat releases its liquid the cabbage leaches off its liquids this may turn out to be too much so I'm going to put it on a a sheet pan plus I'm going to cover it with some aluminum foil 
for the first 20 minutes of the cook, then I'm going to take the foil off and let it finish up. So let me get that done and I'll be right back. And if you don't know, tomatoes is an asset, so it will eat through your aluminum foil if you let that come in contact. So I got some plastic wrap over this to separate the foil from my tomatoes and cause a mess. We got some heavy duty aluminum foil. Put the shiny side down. So here we reflect the heat back. The food perfectly, and I hope that oil wasn't too too loud on the mic. Apologize if it was. We're gonna put this in the oven, set the timer for 20 minutes, remove the foil and the plastic, finish it up for another 20 to 25, and we should be done. All right, I wind up running this for about 50 minutes. Mainly because it didn't even start cooking when I ran it for 20. So to make sure it was going well, I ran it a little longer. And everything seems well. But I want to get a little bit, maybe 20 minutes, without the uh, without the, the steam being held in. You know, kind of cook it down a little bit more. So let me run this about 20 more minutes, and uh, we'll plate up. All right, that's what I'm looking for. Let's get plated up. Give me a little bit of mashed potatoes. Cover these stuff cabbage. Looks awesome. Very tasty. Let's cut into us one of these. Give us a taste. Still hot. Mm. Oh yeah. Cabbage tender. Pork and the veal is great. Very tender. Very delicious. Good look at that. Very steamy. I think you would thoroughly enjoy this. If you uh, like this video, give me a thumbs up. Tell a friend about me. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a comment. And I'll see you on the next one.